three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Nittany No Huddle Podcast. From Philadelphia to Los Angeles and everywhere in between. Filmed at the Nittany No Huddle Studio. It's Jordo, Zach, and Coach Devin covering all things Penn State football all the time. This is from 45 and it's blocked. Lions scoop it up. Brad Haley will score. And here we go. So Central Michigan comes in at 2-1. and one. They lost to Southern Alabama. And they actually had a decent score, I will say score, against Oklahoma State. But a lot of those were chasing points late in the game. I think Oklahoma State kind of pulled off towards the end. I did end up watching that game. But uh, Central Michigan, I think I can sum it up that we need to take them a little bit you know, serious. But it'll be a good test for our defense to see if they can stop Central Michigan's uh, passing attack. And if we can, you know, get it done early, prove that we deserve to be a top 10 team in the country, which I think currently we are, we need to we need to go out and show that, hey, you know, we can take on these max schools and, you know, take them down. So do you guys want to talk anything in particular about Central Michigan? I have some stats up if you guys want. Um, just just going over their basically their team leaders. So Daniel uh, Richardson is their quarterback. He has almost 900 yards through three games. Pretty impressive. That's almost 300 yards a game. Uh, they have a pretty good, uh, I will say a decent running back. He hasn't really performed super great, but I think they're a pass happy team. And Devin, you can correct me if I'm wrong in anything here, but uh, their best wide receiver has 200 yards receiving through three games. So once again, that's, that's pretty good stats. Their defensive side of the ball does not look very good, to be honest. Um, they've given up a lot of points. And some of that is, you know, when you're playing Oklahoma State, you're probably going to give up a lot of points. So as I was saying, 300 yards or their quarterback's averaging almost 300 yards. But I, I'm i hoping we hold him to much less. And this might be a game we've been talking about depth, depth, depth. This might be another game where hopefully we can get our starters out, avoid any injuries, which, you know, knock on wood. We haven't really seen a lot of injuries yet, so that's that's always good. You got to be healthy to win games, and I think that's part of something we're building right now. Uh, Devin, I'll turn it over to you. I know you have some some stats, but one thing I did notice is they have a minus one turnover ratio. So I think this could be a chance for us to get some more turnovers, and maybe we see Wheatley with uh, another pair of interceptions, maybe, and really solidify him as you know the turnover king. So Devin, what do you got for us for Central Michigan? Yeah, so like Jordan said, their quarterback, Daniel Richardson, um, they're, they're going to sling the ball around. I think it's going to be their style. Uh, he started like the last three games of the COVID year, then was their starter last year and this year. So technically his third year, even though he's a sophomore, third year is starting. He has thrown at least 25 pass attempts in every game except for one out of the last two seasons. And is I mean, he threw it 50 times against Oklahoma State. Obviously, we already talked a little bit about that in mop-up duty, but he's he's going to throw the ball. He is not a mobile quarterback. He does not run it. He His career has, like, negative 200 yards rushing because of all the sacks, um, but he does not run it at all. Their running back is uh, Lou Nichols. Lou Nichols, number seven. I think he's a pretty decent kid. Uh, obviously, he's Mac decent. I don't I, – like, he wouldn't even – I don't think he would be a big 10 roster player in all honesty, but for the Mac, I think he's okay. Um, and then defensively, the one name that I, there was two names from Franklin's press release that stood out that we should be on the lookout for. They have a really solid defensive end, Thomas income. He's, he's really solid. I, I actually think he could be a player one day down the line. I think he could end up getting some, some NFL looks eventually. Not quite sure yet, but he needs a good season. I think he's that good. And then they have a safety number three. That's Trey Jones. He's their best um, tackler, like in coverage and all that kind has, of stuff. He has like 18 tackles, right? Something like that. I, I just exited out of it, but I think it was right around there. And then obviously this being a Penn State podcast, wanted to send a shout out to uh, Dante Kent. Anybody who's from the mid state around here, he went to Harrisburg 
was um, a three-year starter for Harrisburg, went to the, went to the state championship twice in those three years. Um, he's starting in the defensive side of the ball at corner. He's at number four. So he is a technically a sophomore, but just a Harrisburg kid. It's always cool when you see Harrisburg kids on these other rosters. Um, obviously, if they – want to dominate the state, like Franklin says, then he probably should be at Penn State if he was that good. But I think Central Michigan is where he belongs, and I think he's, he's a solid player. But I think that's really it for Central Michigan. We should be big favorites. I mean, unless Zach has something else to add, or Alex, our guest, our favorite guest speaker here. Yeah. Alex, did you, did you happen to take any notes ahead of time? Or? Uh, no, I just wrote down a prediction for score of 48 to fucking 14. So there you go. 48 to 14. <laughs> and I was just like, uh, like I said earlier, I think this is a good game for guys to get reps in. You know, your three, four running backs on the depth chart, you know, it is what it is. You, everybody knows what this game is. They should take it seriously. Don't let it be close. And that's all I can say. Yeah. Zach, you got anything on? Don't let it be fucking Texas, Alabama. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, not not a whole lot to add. I think um, I did look at some of the some of the various rankings and and the advanced metrics and and everything I'm looking at says this team, the Central Michigan team, is probably even less uh, talented than Ohio. And we saw how that game played out. And for me, it's it's like the season. You want to keep progressing in the season. And and even though perhaps if you're Penn State, you could kind of sleepwalk through this game. You want to you want to come out and just slam the door on a team like this, you know. Get get to the get the starters to the showers early. I want to see a lot of Drew Aller, maybe the whole second half if things go well. And then you just you can just you know with the momentum that you have from Auburn, you know you don't want to have that that Auburn game and then come out and kind of lay an egg for two quarters against Central Michigan and you have to sort of ratchet the, you know, ratchet it back up. Yeah, you just want to continue that in the Saturday, right? Especially and and we know Northwestern's not great either. But you want to just continue that momentum because you're going to start Big Ten play in earnest next week uh, with Northwestern. So it's really just about, for me, coming out immediately and just doing what the best teams in the country seem to do every year to the the sacrifices or the or the the fun belt games that they get if they're in the South. And you just dominate. You know, good teams beat bad teams convincingly, and it doesn't take two quarters for it to show. Uh, it just you just come out and stop on them, and so. For me, if, if Penn State has sort of returned to the elite or the almost elite tier, these are the types of games where you show it and it, it you beat them early and often and you get the reserves in there. And and Franklin's always talking about building depth and this, these are the games where you do it. Um, get ahead early and, and go to the bench early, right? We saw it with Aller against Ohio where Clifford played one series in the second half. And I think everybody was fine with that because, I, you know, once, once you're up a couple scores and once you know the game's out of hand, why risk injury, right? Or why not take the opportunity? Every snap that Aller can get in, in a game setting is just going to help him advance his, his progress. He is um, the future. Yeah, well, and it, the future may be sooner than, than you know, right? And we, we, were sitting here, away. we were sitting here last year, uh, almost exactly at this time, and Penn State was not, at, at this point, wasn't ranked fourth in the country yet, but we were shortly to be ranked fourth in the country, riding high, thinking we were with delusions of college football playoff and maybe, or at least New Year's six, and then one hit to the quarterback changed everything. And did, did Taquan Robertson get in against Villanova? I can't recall exactly, but I bet you he didn't, or if he did, it was maybe one series at the end. Um, would things have been different if they had gotten him a couple quarters worth of game action earlier in the season, at least start to, you know, kind of let them dip his toes into the water. I don't know who knows it's water under the bridge, but I, I'm really excited by the fact that Franklin started to progress a little bit, sort of mature. We talked about this on the previous podcast about, you know, he used to be calling timeouts in the fourth quarter of uh, games against Georgia state, where we're up like 68 to nothing. So they could pre- preserve the shutout and we're playing the starters the whole way. And now I think he's starting to kind of mature and, and, and when he says we're building depth, as in the past, I don't think he was committed to it or that he truly meant it. And now I think when he says it, he means it. And it's a good thing for the program. Yeah, absolutely. And with that being said, um, last season's hopes weren't the only thing killed by that Clifford injury this podcast included. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all good stuff. I think we'll just go around the horn quick. We already got Alex's projections. I'm going to go with 48 to 14. I think they're going to score two garbage time touchdowns against our 
hopefully third string. But I will say this is something we should be looking at too. This is a great chance for us to really boost our, you know, AP poll because we have a common opponent with another team that's currently in the top 10. So Oklahoma State, this is a great chance for us to be like, hey, we beat the same team, you know, that you were close with at the end. You know, we beat them by four or five scores. So that's all, that's all I'll say. That's my projection. Devin, what you got? Uh, I, I'm going to be a little softer this week. I, I went big last week and I was right to all the haters in the comments. I was the closest one of, of the three of us. Uh, so I'm going to say Penn state 38 central Michigan, 17, three scores, yeah, two touchdowns I mean, in the two touchdowns late. So it's like, it's like 38 to seven late central Michigan, Michigan gets a couple. So, yeah, I will say you were the closest last week. Other than my clickbait thumbnail, that was only off by. That is absolutely points. true. You're right. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm also last in our pickums when we get to that, so I have to take any little bit of a win that I can get. <laughs> yeah, I won't I'm cover the pickums here in a minute. Oh, so. it's bad. Zach, Zach, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to say uh, 52 to 17. Okay, 52 17. So that will cover all of next week. We're going to move on. We got some. Great games coming up, and I know our uh, SEC fanboy will be excited to talk about some of these. So we got top tens up. first, Jordan. What's that? Are we doing top tens first or after? Yes. Uh, well, why don't we do top tens now? That's that's a good point. So we'll we'll start with the top tens. So we're gonna go with Zach first this week since he's always second. <laughs> so Zach, you're up first. You got your top ten ready? Uh, I'm trying to pull it up here. Yeah, you, you don't know it off the top of your head, or uh, <laughs> come on, Zach, you're supposed sure. to be the one holding us together. Yeah. All right, well, it, we'll, we'll, our we'll 87 go. subscribers or whatever it's up to. We'll if it's real. different than what what we gets thrown up on the screen, but I've got I've got Georgia number one, and, and that's it. That they're the best team in the country, <laughs> and just not really any point in discussing anything after that. No, I I've got uh, Georgia one, Alabama two, Ohio State three. Uh, I believe I have Oklahoma four. I don't know. I need I need to try to pull it up if if you can just take your time. It's give fine. me a second, Jordan, because I I had right. I had I had made some changes from the previous weeks. That's fine. That's fine. It's, it's only eleven thirty at night. It's fine. yeah. So if you you want to go right to Devin, that's perfectly fine. All right. So Zach can no longer go first anymore. <laughs> Devin, <laughs> okay. <laughs> My top 10, number one, Georgia by a landslide, not even close. Number two, Ohio State. Number three, Michigan. I know they haven't played anybody. I still think they're going to be 11-1. and one. I, I just I think they're going to lose one game. Hopefully it's to Penn State. Uh, number four, Alabama. Five, USC. Six, Oklahoma. Seven, Oklahoma State. Eight, Kentucky. Move them up a couple more spots. Uh, nine, Clemson. And then at 10, I don't feel good about this, but I put Arkansas. So I have Penn State at 11. I did a I did a full top 25 just so I know what I'm doing. But I have Arkansas at 10. I know they almost lost to uh, some blind school in the South. But <laughs> I don't know. I, they're still okay to me. And I'm still not sold on Penn State. I am not uh, the way Jordan is about Penn State. So I think 11 is actually probably too high for Penn State. But – let's see all right well that's your opinion you're entitled to it so I'll, <laughs> I'll go ahead and hit mine and then we'll we'll circle back to zach and alex you can chime in after zach with uh your thoughts on our top 10 so obviously you got georgia at number one i mean how can you not georgia right now two i'm gonna have michigan there i still think they're as good as anybody i know they haven't played anybody but i still think they're They've dominated anybody they've looked at so far. So we'll get a better test this week with Maryland. And, you know, they might fall depending on how they perform. Three, I got USC. I'm buying the hype on USC right now. I think they're the best team in the in the Pac-12, which Washington is slowly coming up. But I still think USC is probably going to take that. And then four, I got Oklahoma. Um, I, I haven't really seen any flaws with Oklahoma. It looks like they're actually – trying to play defense there in the big 12, which is kind of shocking to see. So I got four Oklahoma five, got the Homer call Penn state. Uh, 
The high has not worn off yet, so we'll see if we can keep riding that. Six, I got Oki State. Seven, Kentucky. Eight, Clemson. Nine, I got Washington. I just basically replaced Michigan State with Washington. A little hot swap there. And 10, finally, Alabama's back in my top 10. So that's what I got. Fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just don't think Alabama has played to what they usually are, I think right now based off what they played against texas and i get it's texas on the road but i mean texas, texas on the road with a former coach as the head coach but yeah there's a lot of reasons into it but i mean texas isn't back so you shouldn't be that close with them that's my take. orange sound correct correct that's my take so zach go ahead and uh hit your top 10 sure and I got a big, for me, I, I think the, the first six teams in the country is, is sort of the first cluster. And then there's kind of a drop off and Jordan kind of hinted at this, hinted at that too. So I've got Georgia one, Alabama two, uh, Ohio state three, I've got Oklahoma four, Jordan touched on it. I think, I think there's a chance they, you know, they're, that they're going to be balanced and, and can be better than they've been in the past from a defensive standpoint. I've got USC five, their offense is obviously the real deal. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if Caleb, Caleb Williams ends up winning the Heisman. I've got Michigan at six, a little lower than the other guys. Just I want to see them play a football game against a, a live Division One opponent before I, I know what they are. Um, then I got the next four teams. It's just sort of a hodgepodge and, and actually a couple teams that are outside of it as well. I've got Oklahoma State seven. I've got Penn State eight. I'm a big resume guy early in the, in the early going, and they've got two pretty good road wins that most teams can't really have one at this point. I've got nine, Kentucky. Uh, and I've got 10 Arkansas. I moved them back. I, I was a little higher on them than, than the rest of you, I think. Um, and what, what went unmentioned was that Missouri state is actually coached by Bobby Petrino, who is the uh, former Arkansas coach that got fired and was wearing the neck brace because yeah. Yep. Yeah. So neck that was really, <laughs> so that was a really interesting one, but um, I still think Arkansas has a chance to be pretty good. Maybe one of the better teams in the sec, but they definitely kind of took a step back with that game. Arkansas is SEC Iowa, just to let you know. Yeah, but they can actually <laughs> Historic, score historically, it's a very similar thing. But yeah, I mean that's that's wrapping up the top ten. Um, I think we'll get a much better look at some teams this weekend, and I know we have some really good games uh, coming up. And I really wanted to maybe think about pushing Tennessee up into that top ten, and they're. Mm. Florida, Florida at Tennessee, Rocky Top. What do you guys think? Who do you th who do you think's gonna win this game? I think I'm gonna go with. Now nah, I'm going Rocky Top. I think Tennessee's <laughs> gonna take it. Uh, I was high on Florida at first, but now I think just Florida and Utah maybe aren't that great. I mean, can't lose to Kentucky in my opinion. So, but Tennessee also played Pitt pretty close, and I don't think Pitt's very good either. So. Uh, it's kind of the scenario, you know, everybody after the top three kind of sucks. <laughs> but that's that's what I got. I got Tennessee taking that one in the pickums. Devin, who do you got? So, as I mentioned, and I'm sure that Jordan probably put the graphic on the screen in post here. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm way behind, so I'm going <laughs> opposite. So, ho before I pick, Zach, what, who did you pick so that I can go opposite? Zach, who'd you pick? Can you hear me, Zach? Tennessee, rock the top. Oh, okay, then Florida. <laughs> which just because I, I actually wrote down Florida, I swear. But, you guys, did you guys not hear that? No, no. We heard, really we heard you the second time. I mean, that's uh, the it, college game day to this, it, this week. It's not picking so. up if you were trying to play rock uh, the top. Darn. Yeah, I'm going Tennessee. All right. At least we won't get copyrighted for using rock the tops. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh Alex, as guest picker, who who you got? I'm going Gators. It's college game day. I know it's a tough road game, but Tennessee is not best. Is, is Knoxville a tough tough place to play? I mean, I Florida mean, has won there like some ungodly amount of times in a row. They've they've absolutely I will, dominated I will that say series. This, though. I will say this: that is, I wrote it here in my notes. That will probably be the game of the week this week. I think so as well. I I mean, I've had it circled because I just Tennessee is such a unique team. And, you know, we had the uh, – who was our coach that lasted like a day? Butch, uh, Butch Jones, right? No, he was there for a while. Uh, uh, Butch Greg Chiano was, was hired. 
they hired and fired him before he ever played a game. <laughs> and then uh, we got the lane train up there in Tennessee for one season before he jumped ship to USC. That was sinking. So it <laughs> yeah. might be a good. I I, I saw Tennessee was uh, getting eleven points. They were favored minus eleven, which was to me it seems like. I think Tennessee wins, but it definitely seems like it'll probably be a close game. That's a lot of points. I'm a, I might have to throw some money on that one, but we'll move on. Uh, that's good. I think that's going to be the game of the week. Another interesting SEC matchup. We got our Kansas at TAMU. So <laughs> I know Zach's big on woo pigs, but <laughs> Jesus. But uh, I don't know who to pick because I kind of hate both of them equally. <laughs> So, um, I mean, just looking at Texas a and I mean, they are the home team, but apparently that doesn't really matter for them this year. So, so technically, it's it's actually in Jerry World. They they play in Jerry World, uh, Arkansas and a and So, okay. So, <laughs> for what so that's a home game. <laughs> Got it. But yeah, uh, I I want to say Arkansas is probably going to win this game. I don't want to bet on Arkansas. But that's who I'm going to go with because I, I can't justify picking Texas A&M after you lose to Appalachian State. So that's who I'm going with. As the reformed Michigan fan, just saying. <laughs> PTSD, bro. <laughs> All right, Zach, wait, who you got? Uh, so I, I'm going to go Arkansas. Uh, I think they bounce back. I think Texas A&M is really, really struggling offensively. They what I think what didn't really go mentioned with the App State loss was they didn't even have 200 yards of offense against Appalachian State and they beat Miami over the weekend. That's a good solid win. I, I think the ACC is garbage, but it's still a decent win. And they didn't have 300 yards of offense. They went 17 to nine, and it was all defense. I, I think Arkansas is a much bigger challenge than um, Miami just because uh, Arkansas can run and they can pass and they've got a quarterback that can run and can pass. So I think he's just maybe a little bit too much for A&M. So I'm going to go Arkansas. All right. So once again, I'm very happy you both picked Arkansas because A&M it is. <laughs> A&M it is. Money Manziel, let's go, baby. Why, why do it you is. have that? <laughs> I you bought, bought it for my classroom, energy. but then I forgot it. I just found it like five seconds ago. So I figured I'd go full Corso here and um, <laughs> helmet, <laughs> helmet <laughs> pick. <laughs> All right, we got we got our uh, guest picker. So I'm picking A and M. I'm going A and M. Oh, all right, Alex on the same. So fun, bus fun here. fact: Arkansas is dead last versus the pass. I'm not saying A and M is a great offensive powerhouse, but Arkansas has given up a thousand yards in three games passing. So and, and here, here I thought we just brought him in for his good looks, and he's out here <laughs> pulling out the stat sheet. <laughs> All right. So, so that was a big sell. Like I'm at an AM at home. Not that it really matters, or Jerry World or wherever the fuck it is. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going, I'm going Gigamags, man. All right. I mean, I'm all about it. <laughs> you know, uh, we, we gotta bring some uh some excitement here. So moving on, another game that could be very defining on how Penn State finishes. We got Minnesota at Sparty. So Right off the bat, I'm going to go Minnesota. I'm high on the Golden Gophers still. I think they have potential to come into Happy Valley and pull an upset. I said that at the beginning of the year. I think they're going to take light work of the Spartans this weekend in East, East Lansing because weather doesn't affect Minnesota that much, even though they play in a dome now, I think. So So uh, I'll go since I think Devin is, is looking to uh... – yeah. See what I'm doing here. I, I also am a big Minnesota guy. They they lost their top receiver last week. He's out for the season. Um, top receiver on a team that runs the ball 60 times a, a game. I don't know how big of a deal that is, but I, I like Minnesota. I still think that they are the odds on favorite to win the West until we see Wisconsin or somebody else really step up. And Michigan State, I, I called it last week. I said they were frauds. I, 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 I picked Washington, Washington and they came yeah. through. I think, and, and Michigan State actually, um, they they're, they suffered a number of injuries too from a defensive standpoint, and you saw that Washington threw for like 400 yards on them. So I think Sparty has a chance to maybe start reeling, and I'm going Minnesota here. Yeah, and uh, with that pick last week, Devin and I both went one and four. So, you know, <laughs> and that's why Devin's picking last. So 
All right, Devin, hit us with how Sparty's going to beat Minnesota, please. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm actually going to go Minnesota on this uh, one. Because, I that because of the Minnesota Gopher helmet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I probably have something somewhere, but I don't have one. Um, yeah, I just I don't think Sparty's that good. I wasn't very high on them last week. I picked them to beat Washington because I didn't think Washington was good because Pac-12 sucks almost as bad as the ACC. But Minnesota is definitely better. And um, our West Coast fans are going to fight you. Keep up. Keep saying we don't have West Coast fans. What are you talking about? We have 88 subscribers. <laughs> But Minnesota is definitely better. So hopefully they can take care of business. I'll take Minnesota. All right. Tiny, you get the tiny, clean sweep here. Tiny pop. I am going Minnesota over the Sparty party. There we go. So, yep. Well, hopefully one Minnesota team can win this weekend. Go birds. <laughs> 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 All right. Moving on. Another interesting game that could decide, you know, the ACC. We got Clemson at Wake Forest. Demon Deacons. I mean, I think I I think Clemson is overrated because they didn't absolutely just dismantle Georgia Tech, which might be the worst power five team right now. Just my opinion. I think I think Clemson still finds a way to get it done this weekend. I don't think they're gonna lose to Wake Forest, but I've seen crazy yeah, things happen. I, I want to pick Wake Forest. They're they're a, a cute story, but uh they they beat liberty last week 37 to 36 that doesn't give me a lot of two point conversion uh, it doesn't give me a lot of warm and fuzzy feelings um it is it is at wake I, and i, but isn't I do he also he's like this legendary coach like right isn't he at i mean league? liberty's not a joke i just i just think clemson's going to come to town and um and sure, actually I, I was does. just reading an article this week clemson has really owned wake forest over the years and not just beating them but like put up crazy numbers on them uh, one th- weird thing I did see with this game, the over under is like 55 or something. And Oof. Wake Forest is a, is actually a pretty competent offensive team. Um, and they're bad against the run. That's a good bet. About the, about so the I'm thinking game. maybe the over there, but, but yeah, I, I, as much as I don't like the ACC and as much as I think Clemson is still a bit overrated, I think Clemson wins this one. Yeah. Devin. So I circled Clemson, but I'm going to change it because I do want to try to be a little different. Uh, I'll go Wake. I think that Clemson is not Clemson's not what they were four years ago, five years ago, when they were just dominating teams every week. When they had a quarterback? Yes. And maybe Zach or Alex, maybe you remember, or Jordan. What's what's Wake Forest's quarterback's name? I can't think of it right now. Off the uh, top of Sam head. Hartman. Hartman, yes. Yeah. And he's back. Uh, he's back now. Yeah, him being back, I think, makes a big deal. Him playing this season. Um I think he gives Wake a chance because I think he's he's good. I really do. He's good, and they have, obviously they have they have one of the better wide receivers in the country too. And um, so I think they can score. I, yeah, that's I think they can score, and I'm not confident that Clemson can score enough. Even though, like I said, I did pick Clemson, but I'm switching it to Wake right now because I don't think Clemson can score enough. Okay? Yeah, and I I think that could be a great dog pick of the week. Like I. I like Wake Forest. I think they're competent enough that they could pull that upset. Alex, what you got? I picked the Tigers over the Deacons. So, Clemson. There you go. All right, we'll move on to what I think is going to be a very boring game, maybe. But I'm excited for it, personally. And I, I don't know why I got a soft spot for Baylor, but we got Baylor at Iowa State. Two Big 12 programs that I actually really – you know, enjoy watching. And it's tough because I want to be a Baylor homer, but Baylor is actually the underdog on the road at Iowa State. I think I'm going to go with Baylor just because I think they have the offense to get it done. Iowa State has been good defensively, but they haven't really played anybody. They played Iowa, but Iowa, I mean, it's Iowa. So that's all I'll say about that. I think I'm going to stick with my method of if i have a t-shirt of that team i'm gonna event on them so <laughs> hopefully baylor doesn't screw me over for a second time go yeah, I, I agree i think this is a big game i think this is uh two teams that uh want to be in the sort of the next rung down from oklahoma in the big 12 uh and, and i guess texas too we'll see you know can either of these teams the winner of this team stands uh in a good shape to maybe challenge oklahoma and texas at the top of the big 12 Iowa State, uh, worth noting, 
Matt Campbell's maybe the odds on favorite to be the next Nebraska coach. He's done a really good job. You never heard of Iowa state in football before Matt Campbell got there. Um, I'm going Iowa state. Uh, they, they finally beat Iowa. They, so they play Iowa every year. I think this is Matt Campbell's sixth year. And it's the first time they beat Iowa in that rivalry game. So maybe, maybe Matt Campbell has something brewing there. I'm going Iowa state. All right. All right. So you split. So that makes it, makes it challenging. <laughs> no uh, so finally <laughs> so, it on. Uh, first off, shout out to Isaiah Brockington from Iowa state was a Penn Stater, played basketball, just signed a ten uh, two-way contract with somebody in the NBA. I don't know. But the fact that that dude's in the NBA shows how hard he worked after he left Penn State because he was not an NBA player at Penn State. Anyways, that means that I'm not picking Iowa State, and I'm picking Baylor. There you go. Alex. That means that Devin views me as a bigger threat than Jordan. You, <laughs> you have the lead, yes. <laughs> Zach has established alpha status. I'm going with Baylor for Iowa again. State. And I think Baylor covers, so okay, that's there how we go. I feel about that. All right, time for our West Coast fans, USC at Oregon State. So I've always had a soft spot for Oregon State Beavers. I don't know why. They got great color scheme, uh, Beaver Stadium, West Coast, <laughs> um, as Zach has called it. I just I think I always play with them in NCAA and I have since I've been in I don't know middle school <laughs> I don't know why they're always a fun team to kind of build up so I'm going with this is beaver beaver country I'm going opposite I think USC could get upset just a, a bold statement I gotta try and steal some points from Zach who I'm assuming is gonna go with USC even though I have USC in my top four so <laughs> I'm just a walking contradiction all the time. That's why I got my basketball shirt on for football podcast. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, and actually I have my pick circled and I didn't circle one for this game because I, I actually watched the uh, week one Boise state at Oregon state. And I don't think Boise is not a vintage uh, Boise side this year, but they Oregon state took it to them and they looked good. And um, this is like a classic. If you're USC, it's a small stadium. Poor Vallis, Oregon, where the heck is that? Like, it's it's a real easy game if you're Lincoln Riley to to struggle to get the players up for. To, is I mean, that stadium sure in the Chaz? <laughs> I, think, I think it's outside of that a little bit. But okay. but um, it's the classic game where it's hard to tell your players, this team is good. This, we have to prepare. We have to go in and play well. Because it's, it's Oregon State, right? They just haven't been relevant in so long. Um, all that said, I'm, I'm taking USC. But what's interesting to me is the is the is the uh, bookkeepers know that this is going to be a game because USC is only favored by six and a half. So I, th I think it has a chance oh. to be a really close game. But but I'm taking USC. OK, I, re I respect that. I didn't realize they were six and a half points. So I, I think I think people are paying attention that, that they're building something in Oregon State. I like it. Maybe they'll uh, get an invite to the Big Ten in a few years. I really wanted to go Oregon State, but I was really scared of just giving Devin a, a a one for two with a with a number a top ten team against an unranked team. It just I, I want him to earn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm still taking USC. I mean, I was really hoping you'd go Oregon State there because it's just it was setting up so nicely for me. I should find keep the trend going. I have a Reggie Bush jersey like right there ish, but I'm not gonna get up. I'm lazy. USC. All right, there we go. Alex? USC. It's not a hard pick. I mean, it's Oregon State. That I think the odds makers are right in giving those odds because, like Zach said, that is a game that is dangerous and it's going to be hard to wake your guys up for it, especially going on the road. But I still think they win. They're Wait just a the better team. Is this a Pac-12 after dark game too? <laughs> Probably. Hell yeah. Pac-12 <laughs> after dark. All right, moving on. We got Hook'em Horns versus the Red Raiders. Texas Tech. I mean, this is getting an easy one for me. I don't think Texas Tech is anything special this year. We're going Hook'em. Okay, cool. Hook'em. Yeah, I'm going Texas. Uh, Texas Tech let me down. Actually let all of us down last week yeah. uh, against NC State. I didn't I realize think, how favored NC State was in that game, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm just I got a, a top 15 ranking. So 
I think it was just punishing NC State for their miserable showing against uh, East Carolina in week one. But I, I, I'm picking Texas here, but I think Texas Tech being at home um, and for all of these big 12 schools that are getting left behind by Oklahoma and Texas, I think the, the last next couple of years are sort of their last hurrah to really kind of flip them the bird and, and kick them out the door. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this be a really tight game. I just think Texas, if Sarkeesian has them ready to play, and if they really are building something after that Alabama showing, then they should be able to take care of business in this one. Yeah, got to build something before they become the big eight again. <laughs> All right, Devin, what you got? So Texas is better. I would definitely say Texas is better, but it's horns down, and it's horns <laughs> down every chance I get. So horns down, Texas Tech. There we go. Uh, I'm going with Texas. I mean, I think – their running back's the real deal. Tech's just not that good. Sark's a real deal coach. Plus, that Bama game didn't inspire. <laughs> kind of showed that I think Texas is a little better than you guys want to give them credit for. But, but are they back? <laughs> they want to be back so bad they joined the SEC. <laughs> so. And that's what we brought you in for. <laughs> so, I so, do, Jordan. I got I got a surprise pick a game an, an extra pick em for us here. All right. So all get right. ready. Three and O Kansas at three and O Duke. Who do you Final got? Four. I got the four and O Rock Tog J Top. Rock Shock Jayhawk. Rock Shock Jayhawk. Yes. That's what that I'm going. Fun. I think that they're actually fun. building something, something really. I, good I think they are too. And I'm going. I'm going Kansas. Uh, Duke beat Northwestern. That's really all I know about Duke this year. But I also Kansas, when, Kansas, here, when Kansas is good, college football is fun. For me, we always talk about 2007. That was the most entertaining year in college football. People forget Kansas. Kansas football got to number two in the country, and they were one win away from winning the Big Twelve and potentially playing for a national title. And so I'm going Kansas. So close. Yeah. I, 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 like I said, I think Kansas is really doing something special. Shout out to Mark Mangino. Yeah. I think, he's, thing, I think like right in that 2007 era, it was like Graham Harrell, Crabtree, Texas tech that beat yes. Texas. So yeah. hmm. full circle might have to change my pick. Graham, Graham Harrell might be the only quarterback I've seen that's older than Clifford when he's playing. So. <laughs> But yeah, all right. Uh, what you got, Devin? Uh, so this is a huge game. Um, I think Duke has better guard play, but Kansas usually is better inside around the bucket. Um, Coach K retired too, so I mean, yeah. So I don't, I don't, can John Shire carry the load? Um, <laughs> John Shire picks up his first huge win as coach of the Duke Blue Devils, and he <laughs> takes it to Kansas on Saturday. John Shire replacing Coach K. Final four bound. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I bring Judge yeah. Seven in. So I, I just like love basketball. Guy. I love basketball. We're just kind of taken aback when you give me a Kansas Duke pick on a football podcast. So yeah, I'd be ready. I can't even talk about football. So yeah, right. just, who cares? But uh no, I'm going. I think that that Kansas is developing big time up there. And I think uh yeah, going Kansas. All right. I like, like it. I didn't. Duke football's irrelevant. I don't care. <laughs> I just don't fucking care. I'm cool with it. Like, when was the last time Duke was relevant? When they had that crazy lateral play against Miami? Probably. Like uh, Daniel Jones. That they do have. They do have a quarterback in the NFL. Any so dimes. Give him dimes. that. Yeah, because because that dude is so good. In the NFL. <laughs> I mean, he's two and zero. You're talking about two and zero, Danny Dimes. All right, guys, come on. No, <laughs> <laughs> we saw um, the Titans are bad. And the Panthers, of course. Right. <laughs> and now we have a special guest pick. Pick them. Um, Bama versus Vanderbilt. So this is the first, first time they played school Vanderbilt. <laughs> so they haven't played since 2017. And in that, it was, what, a 59 nothing shutout. So it's Vanderbilt. I mean, it's kind of the joke of the SEC. But this year, I said earlier, I don't think they're the worst team in the SEC. Um, I think that is firmly in Auburn's hands now. <laughs> but uh, final score, Bama 52, Vandy 14. Okay. 
So I think they're coming back from that Texas debacle and uh, Bryce Young rallies the troops and hangs one on them. <laughs> it's going to be good. So, Yeah, I didn't know this. My, uh, my wife's sister used to live in Nashville and Vanderbilt's not far from Nashville. So that's a huge spot where everybody just goes to see their home teams play. So probably a lot of, if it's, it's in, in Vanderbilt, right? This week, I think. Uh, it is, no, I think it's in Tuscaloosa. I'll just recap. We got uh, Alabama at home. I was going to say that even if it was on the road, there'd probably be more Alabama fans there. So Probably. That's yeah. where I was getting at with that. Especially but. in Tennessee. Like it's, yeah. Yeah. It's Bama. There's Bama fans everywhere. We're in central PA and we got Bama fans, so. Eastern PA. Yeah. <laughs> In Philly. <laughs> in Philly, yeah. So and all because all because of a movie of Bear Bryant coaching not at Alabama. There you go. But that's all I got for today. If you guys got anything else before we get we head out. This is a huge week for Pickums. I, I it, it, I'm all in this week. I either <laughs> really get, bad for you. Or I either get back into this thing and have a chance at winning. Or I'm eliminated, basically. So I'm all, I went all in, and I'm really excited for it. We should have put some sort of a bet on this. If I get to come in and just beat Devin in Pickums this week, then I get invited back. So yeah, and then he just gets to retire on top. So, yeah. <laughs> I think you might become a, a regular. We'll see how the fans. Uh, we'll let the fans decide if he can stay or not. Oh, all eighty-eight of them. Hey. But- that's a lot more than we had all of last year in views, I think. So yeah, we have more subscribers than we had views on six videos last year. Hey man, take what you can get. It's fun. I mean, this is a great time. I really enjoyed myself. Yeah. Keep I'll climbing. be better prepared next time. I'll have more Just, stats. I was talking I'll sports. Smarter. Zach's the only one that's ever prepared, so you don't have to be prepared. According to our comment section, I mean. Well, Zach, yeah. I mean, our comment <laughs> section also said Auburn by three scores, so. Yeah, rough. That is yeah. rough. Yeah. I had a great time uh, after the game, just, you know, getting my Twitter fingers already, just absolutely going ham on uh, all the Auburn Knights that came in. And Auburn Knights. <laughs> I don't know what you call them. Hey, man, you better, you better watch what you say. They might come and drop a deuce on Old Main's doorstep or something or knock over the Joe Boss statue. Oh, wait, the school already did that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean – it is an option, <laughs> well, but uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. Good week for pickums. Good, good game for call or good week for college football, I should say. So, I, yeah, I think there's some good games. I definitely will reiterate the SEC showdown of Florida Tennessee will be game of the week, and it's college game day, so that is the one to watch. Yeah, and that that is in uh, Knoxville, so I kind of wish it was at the swamp. Uh, I'm a big swamp homer guy. Maybe it's just. I think the swamp's better, but yeah, Knoxville's just, well, not bad. Um, I mean, Knoxville, you know, you know, we have, I don't know, what are they like the fourth largest stadium, fifth largest or yeah, something like large. that? Yeah, they have, they have a large stadium, but I mean, it's all about what have you done for me lately, you know? Yeah, they've so, been in a rough spot. spot. That goes for both Florida and, and Tennessee, I guess. So I guess it's the game of who's back, right? <laughs> yeah could be we got we'll, we'll wrap up here you guys got anything else before we head out shout out to our sponsor this week yeah shout out appreciate to, you guys to our sponsor it's good to actually have one you know all 87 of our uh subscribers hopefully we can get some action towards you so yeah. thanks that's we are nil collective yeah. shout out to them yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll put it out there. If you want to come on the podcast and say something sometime, hit us up. We're open to it. And that goes for anybody else who might have a sponsor. Feel free to DM us. We're, you know, just some dude sitting on their couch trying to make a few bucks. You know who you are if you hear this. <laughs> That's all I got. Till next time. Thanks for watching the Nittany No Huddle Podcast. Check us out on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Podcasts are posted weekly on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. 
Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss one of our new shows.